Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. So in this session, I will be doing a quick recap on this topic of the hypercalcemia. So starting with that, first and foremost you need to know how much is the normal calcium level in our body. So in our body, we have the total calcium and as well as the free calcium or the ionic calcium. So the total serum calcium is around 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter and that is the bound form, right? I mean to say this is the bound form and the ionized calcium or the free calcium, it is around 4 to 5 milligrams per deciliter. So when I use the word bound form, it is the one which is bound to the albumin. Now, when you use the word hypercalcemia, what does it represent? It represents increase in either the total calcium or increase in the free calcium level. That is what you mean by the word hypercalcemia. And almost 98% of the calcium which is present in our body, right, it is stored within the bone. Having said that, yes, so if you see the regulation of the calcium, so calcium, it is reabsorbed from the intestines, right, with the help of vitamin D, it is absorbed from the intestines and it is also reabsorbed from the kidney. And once the calcium enters into the circulation, right, it is being distributed to various organs. So 98% of it, right, it is being distributed within the bone. Now you have to understand that there are two important hormones which will try to increase the serum calcium levels. One is the parath hormone and the other one is the vitamin D. These are the two hormones which will try to increase the calcium levels. Whereas we have one important hormone which will try to decrease the calcium level that is the calcitonin. So parath hormone, it will increase the osteoclastic activity and it will cause bone resorption and it will increase the calcium level. Whereas vitamin D, it will increase the calcium level by reabsorption of calcium at the level of the duodenum. Whereas calcitonin, it will decrease the calcium by inhibiting the bone resorption. So these are the three important hormones which will regulate the calcium level of around 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. Having said that, now, what exactly is the site of absorption of the calcium within the GAT? So please remember it is within the small intestine and within the small intestine, particularly in the duodenum, the calcium is absorbed with the help of vitamin D. Next. And about 80% of the ingested calcium load in the diet is lost in the feces unabsorbed. 80% is being lost in the feces. And what are the fractions of the calcium? So, of the calcium, whatever is available and circulating in the blood, free calcium, it is 50%. Protein bound calcium, it is 40%. With only 10% which is bound to the citrate or the phosphate buffers. So we have totally three fractions. And what is the most common cause of the hypercalcemia? So if you see the most common cause of hypercalcemia, it is mainly one of the very important endocrine disorder that is hyperparathyroidism. And that is particularly primary hyperparathyroidism is the mo most common cause for hypercalcemia. And in primary hyperparathyroidism, what is the most common cause? It is parathyroid adenoma, right? That is the most common cause for hyperparathyroidism. And this particular uh, hyperparathyroidism or hypercalcemia, it is usually asymptomatic and it is found as a result of the routine testing. Next. Now, apart from hyperparathyroidism, we have some other endocrine disorders which can contribute to the development of the hypercalcemia. Now, that includes the hyperthyroidism. See, thyroid hormone, whenever it is increased in quantity, it will stimulate the osteoclasts. Right? So by stimulating the osteoclast, it will cause the bone resorption and thereby there will be hypercalcemia within the individual. So we have two endocrine disorders. One is hyperparathyroidism and the other one is hyperthyroidism, which will cause the hypercalcemia. Then now we also have some malignant causes for the development of the hypercalcemia and that important include squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. See the squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, it will produce parathormone like protein right it will produce the parath hormone like protein so because of the release of this parath hormone like protein by the squamous cell carcinoma which will cause increase in the osteoclastic activity and it will cause the bone resorption okay next then followed by that metastatic disease of the bone so these are these are the two malignancies 
squamous cell carcinoma of the lung and metastatic disease of the bone. Next, followed by that, there are certain granulomatous conditions which will cause the hypercalcemia. And these granulomatous conditions include sarcoidosis, which is characterized by deposition of non-caseating granuloma, then tuberculosis, which is characterized by the caseating granuloma, then berylliosis, then yeah, so all these are associated with the development of hypercalcemia, which are your granulomatous diseases. That is sarcoidosis, tuberculosis and berylliosis. Now, and at the same time, let me tell you, there are certain fungal infections which will cause hypercalcemia. And these fungal infections which will cause hypercalcemia, it includes the histoplasmosis and the coccidiomycosis. So let me tell you this histoplasmosis, it is also associated with the adrenal insufficiency also right it is it also causes the addison's disease as well so please remember these are the fungal infections which will cause the hypercalcemia now the question is just now we were discussing like sarcoidosis tuberculosis and berylliosis they cause hypercalcemia now why why is that the hyper uh, this granulomas will cause the hypercalcemia the reason is that the neutrophils in granulomas they have their own 25 vitamin d hydroxylation right yes definitely i understand granulomas are the con cell uh, granulomas are the one which contains the macrophages and it remember they also contain the neutrophils okay so the neutrophils in granulomas they have their own 25 vitamin d hydroxylation right and that is what is responsible for the production of the active 1-25 vitamin d which will cause the calcium reabsorption from the intestine then now what are the drugs which will cause the hypercalcemia so the rare causes that include vitamin d intoxication thiazide diuretics will cause hypercalcemia lithium use will cause hypercalcemia pager's disease right as well as prolonged immobilization will also cause the hypercalcemia so lithium is the drug used in the treatment of the bipolar disorder and pager's disease it is the malignancy of the bone so the drugs if you take vitamin d intoxication thiazide diuretics and as well as the lithium use so these are the one which will cause the hypercalcemia now the other important thing is if the individual is having acidosis there will be development of hypercalcemia now how the acidosis causes the hypercalcemia that is acidosis it results in an increased amount of the free calcium right that is what i am trying to tell you right why is that the reason is that this is because the albumin it will buffer the acidosis right if there is increase in h plus ion the protein which will buffer that increased h plus ion is the albumin now where is this albumin bound to the albumin it is bound to the calcium so if it wants to buffer the h plus ion the albumin has to be released from the bound form of the calcium and it will go and buffer the h plus ion so increased binding of h plus to albumin results in displacement of calcium from the albumin right results in displacement of calcium from the albumin so the concept is very simple right whenever there is uh, increase in h plus ion the albumin which is bound to the calcium come out of the calcium and it will buffer the h plus ion thereby what will happen to the free calcium levels the free calcium levels increases okay next now we have another clinical condition called familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia so this is also one of the condition which will cause the hypercalcemia and you need to understand what is the mechanism behind that so it is a benign form of hypercalcemia fine right and what does it presents with it presents with mild hypercalcemia and there will be also family history of hypercalcemia and urinary calcium to creatinine ratio if you see it is less than 0.01 and urine calcium it is less than 200 milligrams per day right there will be hypocalciuria so you see this there is hypercalcemia but there is hypocalciuria most of the other conditions whenever there is hypercalcemia there will be hypercalciuria also but here along with hypercalcemia there is hypocalciuria now first of all let me just explain you what exactly is this familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia that means what is pathogenesis so what is the pathogenesis of familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia? Now, we have a gene called CASR, right? What does it do? It is a calcium sensing receptor gene, right? It is a calcium sensing receptor gene. 
and where is it expressed it is expressed in the kidney and as well as it is expressed in the parathyroid tissue what it will do it will sense the serum calcium levels and it will give information to the parathyroid about the calcium levels now in case of familial hyper in in case of familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia there is loss of function of this particular casr gene that means it cannot detect how much is the calcium so because of that what will happen is the parathormone will perceive that there is low calcium right the perceived lack of calcium levels by parathyroid leads to excess amount of parathormone secretion actually your casr gene has to take the information in the serum and it has to give information to the parathormone but here casr gene is being mutated so that is the reason why your parathormone is not getting adequate information how much is the calcium which is present in the serum so what the parathormone will do parathormone will be continuously releasing the parathyroid gland will be continuously releasing the parathormone so what will be the features so when the parathormone is excessively released into the circulation that will cause bone resorption and that will increase the calcium levels okay now what are the features of the familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia it is indicated by the presence of the hypercalcemia at the same time with hypocalciuria right at the same time with hypocalciuria in all other causes of hypercalcemia what did i tell you just now elevated calcium levels in the blood right they correlated with elevated calcium levels in the urine but this is the exception here right this is the exception here okay next what is the treatment see it is a mild hypercalcemia right and most of the times they are asymptomatic so no treatment is generally required since patients are almost asymptomatic okay so that is about your familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia then followed by that now you take the hypercalcemia if at all if it produces any symptoms what are the neurological manifestations of the hypercalcemia neurological manifestations of hypercalcemia include decreased mental activity such as lethargy and as well as confusion that will be neurological manifestations of the hypercalcemia then what are the gastrointestinal manifestations of the hypercalcemia gastrointestinal manifestations it includes decrease in the bowel activity such as there will be development of constipation and as well as the anorexia right there will be development of constipation and anorexia and there will be nausea and vomiting there will be also development of the pancreatitis so why is that there is pancreatitis that is due to precipitation of calcium in the pancreas so that will result in the development of pancreatitis right next now what are the renal manifestations of the hypercalcemia the renal manifestations include polyuria and as well as polydipsia why is that because whenever there is hypercalcemia the individual will develop nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and secondary to that the individual will have the polyuria and as well as the polydipsia then the calcium precipitations in the kidney causes the kidney stones and as well as nephrolithiasis so these are the two renal manifestations of the hypercalcemia now what are the cardiovascular manifestations of the hypercalcemia let me tell you there will be hypertension in almost 30 to 50 percentage of individual and if you take the qt interval the qt interval will be shortened in these patients with the hypercalcemia now whenever there is hypercalcemia how do you treat what will be the first line treatment let me tell you your main aim is to flush out the calcium out so for that what you have to do is you have to give vigorous right you have to give vigorous fluid replacement with normal or the half normal saline okay so when there is severe life threatening hypercalcemia you need to give vigorous fluid replacement with normal or the half normal saline and followed by that you need to give a loop diuretic right and the loop diuretic such as furosemide has to be given that is mainly to promote the calcium loss hmm? that is mainly to promote the calcium loss so that is about the first line treatment that you have in the hypercalcemia that is first iv fluids and then the furosemide next now what are the drugs which will inhibit the bone resorption because hypercalcemia is mainly because of the bone resorption in multiple conditions whatever we have discussed right and in that case you need to give bisphosphonates and that particular bisphosphonates include zolindronate or the pamidronate so what they will do they will inhibit the osteoclast and they will stimulate the osteoblast right they will stimulate the osteoblast 
right and thereby you know there will be inhibition of the bone resorption now when will the maximum effect of the bisphosphonate starts right this is little disadvantage of bisphosphonate because the maximum effect it takes almost two to three days then what is the rescue for two days then right until two days if the effect doesn't start the rescue hormone what we have is the calcitonin so calcitonin it will cause more rapid decrease in the calcium levels right so meanwhile the action of your bisphosphonate is going on right you can add this calcitonin then finally what is the mechanism of action of the calcitonin so what this calcitonin will do is calcitonin will inhibit the osteoclast right and it will inhibit the bone resorption that is what is the function which is being done by your calcitonin so first line treatment will be iv fluids then you need to give lute diuretics that is furosemide right and then bisphosphonates and then we have calcitonin so this is about the treatment of the hypercalcemia right thank you very much see you again in the next video